My name is, welcome, first off, uh, and we can go ahead, oh, and we are recording. Uh, welcome, my name is Sandy Spinagle, and it has been my pleasure to moderate these webinars for Charles County Economic Development and the Charles County Chamber of Commerce. And as always, we are thrilled to have US Tech uh, behind the scenes, Jay, our trusted uh, wizard as we were referring to him there he is he makes his one debut appearance um but if you if you were here last week you guys saw jay was on the screen actually was a panelist so that was a, a a fun one for us last week if you'd like to catch any of the recordings we have all of the recordings on meetcharlescounty.com um, under their covid section so charles county economic development's website and we have been providing these as a way of connecting, trying to provide some resources in a really unusual time for us. Every day is a little bit different. Um, here we are mid-May and, you know, we're still very much in a stay in place capacity. Um, and today I have two um, super fun um, speakers. Yvonne, I have just met recently and Julie, I have known for many years. Um, they both have very different um, backgrounds and experiences and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves and we'll start with Julie. Hi there. So my name is Julie Gaver and I have been self-employed as a consultant and a corporate trainer for almost 24 years. So I have been working from home for that entire time. Um, my experience working from home has run the whole gamut. So I started working from home uh, when my children were in middle school and elementary school. So I worked from home through that whole experience of having children in and out of the house. Uh, and then about six years ago, after they had long moved out, my husband retired and he had always been leaving the house. And uh, so that was new territory to navigate as well, working from home with my office. And now all of a sudden there's this other uh, adult person in the house and trying to navigate around that. So I have been, you know, in a environment like this for as long as I can remember when all of the stay at home, work from home started and uh, all my friends were like, oh no, oh no, what are we gonna do? I felt like saying, here, hold my beer, you know, because um, I've kind of worked through a lot of the things that many people are having to deal with now. So that's my story. Glad to be here. Awesome, thank you. Yvonne, what about you? Would you give us a little bit of your perspective um, coming at us from uh, the human resource perspective of the world? Hi everyone, my name is Yvonne Harris. As Sandy mentioned, um, I am an HR professional. I also um, am an expert HR um, in diversity and inclusion as well. And additionally, very active in the community as it relates to gender balance and equity in women's health care. So very similar to Julie, I've worked from home previously so this transition to work from home in terms of work was not the challenge. It was the schooling piece. I have been going through fifth grade with my fifth grader uh, for the past <laughs> two months. And um, that has presented the balance challenge for me. So um, I can definitely relate and connect to those who are struggling with the work from home and the school from home composite. Awesome. Yeah, yes. I'm really, I'm thrilled that you offer that perspective. Um, as I've said in previous um, sessions, um, I have a small business and we do not normally work remotely. We are generally, you know, all in a very small, albeit office. Uh, and um, not only that, but my team, I've hired a few people new to my team. So we've been trying to onboard in this state of COVID. So it's been really interesting. So I'm really looking forward to this discussion. Um, so just to dive in and first to say that none of us are mental health practitioners. None of, none of us are mental health professionals. Um, we're really coming to it uh, from a place of, um, you know, our shared experiences and um, how we can um, offer perhaps some guidance and advice for self or for you know, team, if you happen to be in an um, organization and you're managing or working with others. 
So how can, having said that, um, Yvonne, maybe we'll start with you. How can we start to um, figure out if this, some of these working from home challenges are struggling, um, you know, if they're starting to affect our work? Um, what are some of the things that might be an indicator might require us to take a pause for a second? Sure. I think the key is just leveraging this time to really be in tune with yourself. If you are constantly in go mode, um, you're probably missing some key steps in your own self care, which simply starts with just knowing yourself and knowing your body. And um, Sandy, as I was thinking through mental health, um, I know for me, at least, um, I believe that there's the mind-body connection. And oftentimes, um, you know, things can show up physically. But again, if you're in constant go mode, or if you're so focused on everyone else and not yourself, you could be missing some key signs that maybe you don't have a mental health challenge or huge issue, but maybe your body is trying to tell you to spend a little bit more time on yourself, um, to, um, I used the term self-care earlier, but to sew into yourself and to provide yourself with um, some time and space to simply breathe, detach, and disconnect. Um, so I think that's, you know, part of you know the foundation for the conversation sandy um, which i'm so thankful that your organization is facilitating today but in terms of signs of how it could show up uh, changes in eating and sleeping patterns um, huge sign for many people um, sometimes if your mind is racing all day um, what is it what are the tools that you can put in place that can slow your mind down um, so that it's not racing all night, which could be causing some problems with your sleep patterns. And I would say anything that may show up in your space that is either now absent in your new work from home routine or excessive. So if you look on the pendulum and you find that there are certain things where just, you're just simply stepping out of that space of moderation and it went away or it went to the place of excess, those could be some critical points where maybe you just have that moment of um, self-awareness and say, that's not my normal habit. I don't normally watch the news from sunrise to sunset. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not normally a news junkie. Um, that has become a point of excess for me. Now, how do I taper back? How do um, I change that habit? So those were a couple of things that come to mind. I know Julie probably has some great points as well. Um, I'd love to hear from her too. And then I do have a few more that may just show up as we continue our conversation. Oh, yeah, Julie, any thoughts there? The word that kept coming into my mind after um, Yvonne was the word boundaries. And so I don't, yeah, exactly. I don't know if that's resonating, if that resonates with you at all or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when we talk about, you know, what are the signs, I, I agree with Yvonne entirely, is it's knowing yourself and knowing how you typically feel, um, and then recognizing differences in that. For me, um, when there have been times that I notice that I need to take a step back and really do some self-care, as Yvonne noticed, there are three main ways that I see change in me. And the first one Yvonne just mentioned is sleep patterns. Um, when I go through periods where my sleeping becomes very erratic um, or I have trouble falling asleep because as she said, I, I'm, you just can't seem to shut things off. Right. That to me is a red flag. Also, you know, maybe being able to go to sleep, but then waking up at some point in the middle of the night and then immediately going to, oh my gosh, I didn't finish this. Oh my gosh, I need to write a list about that. Um, so that's one of the red flags for me. The second one is I will notice a very dramatic drop in my energy level. I'm very high energy. Some people may say I'm high strung, but you know, I like to put a good spin on it. But when I notice my energy level really starts to dip and I feel like instead of being a Tigger, I'm like an Eeyore and I'm thinking, oh my God, I just, 
I want something to drink from upstairs and I'm too tired to even go get it. That kind of thing to me is a sign that, you know, the fuel is really empty in the tank. And then for me, the third one is procrastination. And, you know, I am all about, you know, waiting till the last minute and saying, oh, I work better under pressure. You know, I think we all have our little excuses of why we procrastinate. But when I notice that I'm procrastinating to the point where um, it's even starting to concern me, that says, okay, uh, stop, let's take some time and you put some fuel back in the tank. Yeah, those are great ones. So I, you know, and I'm wondering, obviously, that the procrastination piece obviously impacts the work that you're doing exactly. um, and figuring out how to pivot from that. Um, you know, any thoughts on, um, you know, once, once you realize that it's a problem, do you share it with others? Do you, you know, try to solve the problem yourself? Like, how do you fall in there? I think you could start um, with a self check, mm -hmm. and, um, and and this could just be my style or um, you know kind of just how I operate. But let me just figure this out on my own for a little bit. Um, I think especially during this time, everyone is facing challenges. I think some just hide it better than others. And if you've never extended grace to yourself, now is the time for grace. Um, three G's that come to mind, grace, grit, and gratitude. Mm -hmm. Those are three very important things right now. So I, I hear Julie say procrastination, which as she was explaining that to me tied to the energy. I simply don't have the energy right now. So let me kick this soda can down the road um, a little bit. So if you're um, experiencing that procrastination issue and the energy issue. What are some things that you could be doing to increase your energy, even if it's just for short spurts? Um, a word I'm hearing a lot right now is the word sprint. Let's just run a sprint. Um, this is not a marathon. Every single day does not have to be a marathon. But if I can just have four good sprints throughout the day, what can I get done in those sprints? Can I get a report done? Can I get these fifth grade math word problems done that I don't even understand, but we'll muscle through it together? Um, can I get this recording done? Just all the things that we're trying to do. So putting it in terms of having some sprints. So that way at the end of the day, and this goes to boundaries, there needs to be an end to the day. <laughs> you just can't keep going and going and going. But my point being, you have wins. You can look back on the day and say that thing that I did procrastinate on on Monday well thank goodness I got it done on Tuesday and I got this done and maybe now I can go to sleep and not have my mind racing about all the things I didn't do but just be thankful in that moment for the things that I did do. I had to do that today I had to catch myself I had been procrastinating and playing email tag and phone tag with people and I just oh my gosh it just wasn't clicking <gasps> and then it clicked and so I just literally 20 minutes before this call I just had to sit and say yes it worked I did it and I had to celebrate that win and I love that I keep raking these notes on um on that and just because I'm not in the office to say hey, what I did I got Right. I had to say it to myself, but um, maybe I'll text the team. Although, okay, I've done that too. I've texted the team and said, ah, I worked, I did it. Um, ah, but definitely yeah, celebrate so, it. So I have been um, kind of very tongue in cheek uh, using a hashtag on social media about this very thing. And the hashtag that I use is set the bar low. Sandy, I don't know if you've seen that or not. And That's most great. people are like, set the bar low. You're supposed to, you know, aim high. And, you know, while you're off and doing all these things, you should learn a new language and you should, you know, run a marathon and train. And my thought is during this time, especially be kind to yourself. And I know for me, and it gets to this procrastination energy level, 
I get most excited right after I've accomplished something, anything. Mm -hmm. And so when I kind of jokingly say set the bar low, it means maybe today all I'm going to do is, you know, make the to-do list and, you know, do one or two things. And I know it sounds kind of counterproductive to what most people say, but for me, I do those two things and something happens. I feel that kind of shift in vibration and then it kind of starts to play on each other. So it's gotten to the point with so many of my friends and clients, it's like, oh, guess what I got done today? And they'll say something and then it'll be hashtag set the bar low and be like, yay, we won. Um, so I know, I know it sounds kind of silly, but it, you have to do whatever little trick that makes you get in that zone where you can be productive. Is your hash, is your uh, Twitter hand or your Instagram handle uh, at Julie Gaber? Yes. Okay. Okay. I was just. Uh, I don't have Twitter. Instagram. Okay. It's just Instagram yeah. and Facebook. Okay. Instagram. Yeah. So I just I, I I just put that popped that in oh, the okay. chat for everybody okay. to see it. Um, so we could get that trend in here um, today. <laughs> you know, That's great. really set the bar low. The motivational speakers will hate us for that. I know. It's so great. <laughs> so great. But I think that there is that, you know, uh, that reality check. Mm -hmm. And the things are going to be different. Um, yeah. One of the things, and I'm going to have to read it. I had a, I shared a quote a few weeks ago, um, uh, and this something that Yvonne said a minute ago reminded me of it. Um, your staff are not working from home; they are at home during a crisis, trying to work. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's different. It's different. And then it's very you different. Add this whole homeschooling piece. Um, you know, I've been fortunate. I don't, not homeschooling my daughter. She's in college. I don't even know what calculus three is. So I didn't have to deal with that. But for those that are learning fifth grade again, or are, you know, trying to remember geometry or algebra or world history or all of these things, all while also having a business meeting and we're all on zoom. So we're trying to like do that. And like, and, and then it's this feeling of I'm not enough. This feeling of I'm not getting anything done. Yvonne, I'm curious what how how you're finding that balance and able to manage and stay present with your son and stay present with your clients. So I'm creating time and space for myself. And primarily for me, it's in the morning. I'm naturally a morning person and I tend to get up earlier than most people. So that's my sacred time. That's my space. That's my moment where I can set my intentions for the day um, and also to establish my to-do list, which is still very long. Um, but to Julie's point of set the bar low or extend yourself some grace, mm -hmm. you may not get through everything, but you can still make progress. And um, Sandy, I love the point that you made, which is just the reminder that um, maybe those who are listening today and those who we come in contact with, there is a crisis going on. Mm -hmm. Um, we just happen to be working from home and schooling from home, but I think that sometimes gets lost yeah. and um, just recognizing that even if you have the energy today to get on this webinar, celebrate yourself. Yeah. Yep. You know, you did something positive. You sewed into yourself in light of all that's going on and we will get through this. We will get through this. But yeah, so I guess in short, Sandy, mornings are my sacred time. And that's when I set my intentions through the day. The important things that I need to get done, and this may help someone who's listening, I get them done before noon. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I function. If it's not done by noon, there are just way too many distractions that come up in the afternoon. So my important lifts are in the morning. Yeah, can I jump into that as Please. well? Yeah. yeah, I agree too. A lot of it is really knowing when your best peak times of uh, work and productivity are, your energy level. I'm a morning person as well. And then, believe it or not, after dinner, hmm. I kill it. You know, I don't know what it is, but right after dinner, I get this burst of energy. And I know all the sleep experts probably tell you you shouldn't do that. But I can go down in my office and crank out, you know, a couple hours um, before bedtime and feel really okay with the fact that I 
kind of did nothing of great use in the afternoon. Um, although I don't have children at home anymore, I did have a, sort of a unique situation. I have a grown son who lives in New York City, um, and he was working on a graduate degree at Columbia. And of course, everything shut down there. And so he um, had to get out of Dodge. And so he was home with us for eight weeks, um, actually just went back. And what I found myself doing was, you know, he would come into my conference room here and set up shop. And, you know, he would have classes. And so when he was having classes and doing his thing, I would go in my office and do work because I found that when he wasn't in classes, I just kind of wanted to hang with him. And I thought, well, okay, I'll kind of model my schedule to kind of suit his schedule. And I don't know necessarily that that works with young children, but I know, you know, perhaps you can set up some kind of a schedule that if they're watching a video or doing something and you don't have to be right there with them, maybe you can be in the other room and just do, you know, one or two small things. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to mention is how important it is to just don't lose your sense of humor. Um, oh my gosh. I just, some of the things that have happened to us over the last couple of weeks, you just have to laugh at it. And, you know, if you get so serious about it, you're not going to make it. If you can't laugh at the things that stress you out the most, you know, it's going to be a really, really long year. <laughs> okay, you're a motivational speaker and your hashtag is set the bar low. I think that is using your humor to the nth exactly. degree, for goodness <laughs> sakes. So, so <laughs> Exactly. I love it. <laughs> cool. And yeah, I love this idea of, you know, creating routines and figuring out what works for you. And um, maybe that every week doesn't have to be exactly the same mm -hmm. or every day doesn't have to be exactly the same. I know that, um, you know, I end up having meetings with people that are like, oh, yep, it's, it's recess time for my kid. You know, yeah. they're upstairs or downstairs or they get Xbox time for 45 minutes while we're here talking. And that, so just really, I find myself just having to like kind of have a new respect and appreciation yeah. for the person on the other end that's dealing with well, all these things. And we're all in this together. I mean, everybody is facing the same things. I don't know if you all saw uh, Jimmy, who's the late night uh, talk show guy, Jimmy, that's oh, Jimmy Fallon. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He was doing an interview. They were showing it just this morning uh, when I was getting ready and he was doing an interview of some celebrity. And the next thing you know, his two girls like descend on him while he's trying to conduct this interview and their faces are all real close, you know, and they're laughing and he's just laughing. And the person he's interviewing is just having a good time because everybody's faced with those same things. Right. Um, and so if you can't laugh at the fact that we're all in this together in that way, you know, what can you do? Cool. Um, I'm curious of you. I mean, you've kind of touched a little bit on, um, on your routine and things like that. How are you, I mean, obviously we're not going to gyms right now. We're not going to yoga classes outward, um, but what are you doing to kind of maintain that self-care piece? Um, you know, as you mentioned earlier, um, you know, what can people do to start and stop the work and then remember the stuff that they need to do? Um, I'm a big walker, so I love to walk during the, in the middle of the day, but it's been hard for me to say, no, 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 I need to block this time on my calendar. It's a non-negotiable, which is a, a word I'm non-negotiable. Okay. Until you ask me and then I'm like, ah, delete. It's fine. Right. But I need to stop doing that um, because it gets me. Any tips or thoughts kind of along those lines and carving out the time and making them non-negotiable time for you to self-care? So I'm a walker too. And um, I have found a path near my home that no one really uses. So I'm definitely a safe space in terms of social distancing. I do walk with my mask. Um, and actually, I've walked so much. The one thing I've worn out during this work from home time period are my sneakers. I actually had to order some more sneakers um, for walking. Um, I do it early in the morning. Again, that time when um, everyone else in my network is not reaching out for me and looking for me. And there have been many days I've had the um, blessing to do it both in the morning and in the evening. 
And I found that um, therapeutic in terms of just being able to walk out the thoughts of my day. And it almost served as my commute, um, a big disconnect for me um, when I'm working from the office is I use my commute time to unwind and then you come home and you start uh, your home routine. For many of us, we've lost that commute time to decompress because we don't have a commute. What is it from your living room to your kitchen maybe? Um, but that walk or any type of physical activity, something to trigger maybe within your body and your mind that you're going to a different phase of the day. Um, maybe that's the, um, the trick that I'm playing on myself, but it allows me to say, okay, work is officially over until the sun rises again. And now I can transition into family time, reading a book, or something like that. So I'm with you, Sandy. It's been walking for me. That's been very helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Julie, what about you? I know you're a big gardener. I, I, I know am. your gardens look amazing these days. So I, you know, I try to walk because my hips retain ice cream and, um, you know, I'm running out of elastic clothes. <laughs> So, but, um, you know, the weather has been like really challenging and I do notice that on the days that I can't get out and do some kind of a walk, uh, my morale is definitely a little bit worse. Uh, I am an avid gardener. I tell you for years, I have been saying, if I only had more time, my gardens would be just beautiful. Well, hello, um, be careful what you ask for. Right. So, um, I've spent a lot of time outside and I think that's the key, regardless of what your interest is, whether it's walking or gardening or, you know, being outside and just, you know, shooting baskets with your son. Um, I think if the weather is decent, you need to get outside and get some of that vitamin D because that is critical to just your morale and your motivation and just the activity too. You know, the weight gain, <laughs> I don't even want to think about right now. I'm not even going to think about it. <clears throat> it gets back to y Yvonne's grace uh, comment. <clears throat> but, um, but I do see a noticeable difference when the sun is shining and I am able to, even if it's like I'm sitting at my desk and I'm trying to write something and it's just not coming to me, I literally get up and I walk out the door and I just walk around my yard for a few moments and like see if anything's come up and clear my head and come back in and sit down. And it's amazing. It can even just be like 10 minutes. Um, and it does the trick for me. Oh, thank you. My next question is about <laughs> say no, say no. Mm -hmm. It's a boundary piece. I, I feel like the word boundaries is coming up over and over again. And, um, you know, being again, kind of respectful of time and knowing when you don't have time for that, even though we're sitting at home and we don't have a commute in many instances, how does that word or that phrase resonate with you? Let's start with Julie on this one. Yeah. Um, that is something I've struggled with for most of my adult life. I can honestly say that I think I finally can do it. Um, I just did it actually a couple days ago. Somebody called with a big ask and um, it just wasn't in my wheelhouse to do. And um, I said, no, I, um, in that particular case, I explained the why behind it not to justify my position or give them ammunition to talk me out of it. But in that particular case, I wanted them to know where I was coming from. Um, being able to say no, it's a, it's a sentence with a period. And I think it's hard for people to understand that you don't have to tell them the whole long story of why you can't or why you're not interested or why you don't want to. Now, it's different if it's your boss. Obviously, um, I work for myself, um, and so sometimes I get a call from a client for some kind of work that it's just, it's not the best use of my time, and I just, you know, simply recommend somebody else. Um, that's one way that you can do it. If it's 
something you're not interested in and don't have time to, I think to be able to offer them a suggestion um, can sometimes take the, the pressure off of you. Um, I did that for many years and I would offer up my friends and then they were getting mad at me. So <laughs> I've, I've learned now just to say, um, you know, I'm, I'm so honored that you asked me, but it's just not something that I can do for you right now. I'm just leave it at that. But it took a long time. I mean, a long time. And you're right. Yes. No is a complete sentence mm -hmm. um, is, is mm -hmm. challenge. Um, Yvonne, I'm curious if you're, oh, any thoughts that you might have um, the same or different from Julie? So I still struggle with saying no. Um, nothing about COVID-19 has impacted that. It was a struggle before and will continue to be a muscle that I need to exercise even as we transition into the next phase. I have become better at not now. So I found this space where maybe someone does present me with a good idea or a good opportunity, but the time just isn't right. And or I need a little bit more time to warm up to a particular idea or project. Uh, that to me has um, been able for me to keep the connective tissue with the person with the ask and me, but also to Sandy created a boundary that said, I need time and space to get to your ask, but you are still very important. And I'm honoring um, the, your request, but I just need a little bit more time. I will say though, for the no's, which we've all had to say probably now more during this time, I am cognizant and aware that I'm dispersing my nose. All of my nose can't be to my family. Mm -hmm. So if I need to give four nose a day, I don't know why the number four is resonating with me today. One's to work, one's to a community project, maybe one's to family and one's to a friend. It just has to be spread out. If all of your nose are in, um, one relationship channel in your life, then um, you're probably cutting off some positive energy, some um, flow that you need in that aspect of your life. And you don't want to do that. Wow, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I had not thought about it in that capacity before. Yeah, that's that's nice. I, you're right. I guess if you're constantly telling your kids, no, not now, not now, not now, no, 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 then... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're yeah. gonna they're gonna react exactly in in their way yeah so, that's yeah. good advice yeah that was nice um i know we touched on this a little bit i'm curious particularly yvonne but julie having an uh, an, an adult um child in in the home at a time um any any tips um, aside from how to entertain, um, but any tips on <laughs> any tips for um, you know f for those that are trying that juggle and um, trying to um, keep kids and their mental health and their mental state high. Um, kids, it can also be, certainly be adults, you know, our partners, things like that. Any thoughts? Exactly. They're really watching us now. And I think it's important that we just show our children and our family that we're human. And um, I talked about extending grace to yourself, but remember to extend grace to others as well. And I feel like I've done a fairly good job. Obviously, I could call my son down here and have him chime in, but just in not putting pressure on him, um, I don't think there's anything you know that pressing between now and the end of the school year that I would want him to be stressed about. Uh, we still have our daily routine. We still need to learn, but there's also learning in other ways. Um, it was interesting. I think it was last week, ladies, or maybe the week before. Don't hold me to the date. But um, Haley's comet or comet was in the sky, and um, you know, so an opportunity to go outside as a family and to look up at the sky and to look at the stars. I don't know that I saw anything, but it was just let's like to Julie's point, let's go breathe some fresh air, um, let's stay up a little late, let's feel the grass between our toes, and you know, let's let's do something different, let's learn something, let's see if we can remember what the how 
know, we name the stars or whatever. Um, so I'm just trying to have those fun moments because I am aware that my son will look back on this and he will process memories of some sort that he will reflect on five years from now, 10 years from now. And I want them to be memories of how that was a great time for our family and not how my mom was pulling her hair out and driving us all crazy. And I think I've done a pretty good job at that. That's amazing, cool. Julie? Yeah, um, I actually, my son's back in New York and we got a thank you note in the mail today. And it was, it was the coolest thing, um, what he wrote and just about what the time meant that he was able to spend time with his parents at this uh, phase in his life really meant a lot to me. Um, I want to jump on something that Yvonne said earlier about just the scheduling aspect. Um, I, I think we need to stop thinking that we're the ones that have to come up with the answer for everything and we need to come up with the schedule for everything when when my kids were growing up um, we had family meetings all the time and i think one of the greatest things that we can do even to nurture the next generation of leaders uh, and employees is to teach problem solving skills yeah. and so to me if, if i still had some at home i'd be sitting them down and saying okay this is what we need to do. What's your idea? What do you think we should do? How can we make sure that all of us get such and such a thing done? And, and, and let the kids also be in charge of coming up with the solutions for how we're going to navigate through this very uncertain time. Um, I taught for Dale Carnegie for many years and one of the quotes that he was uh, known for saying was, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. And I mean, you can substitute child, you know, or student or whatever. And that if you allow the whole family to have some input on how you're going to structure the day or how you're going to handle certain situations, they have buy-in um, and, and they'll work harder because they recognize that they had a part in that. And so really, it's no different than being in a work environment and leading a team. Uh, it's just that your team now, you know, thinks girls have cooties or whatever, you know. So it's, um, it's kind of the same principles in place. I love it. I love it. Um, and this idea of collaboration in ways that you would not have collaborated before. You probably mm -hmm. would have just done it. And I think the same goes for the team. Um, one of the things that I've been doing um, on our um, daily team meetings um, now, they mm -hmm. had not been daily be before, yeah. COVID, oh, yeah. but now they're daily. And yep. so and it is a good way to, to like officially jumpstart our day. Um, but uh, once a week, we are all, um, you know, one of us is leading a discussion and it could be something you know, a strength finders exercise, we've done a communications exercise, mm -hmm. we've done a learning objective, you know, learning styles and preferences exercise, things like that. So um, getting, so that's not just me preachy preach, because yeah. nobody wants that all the time. So mm -hmm. really kind of feeling a part of that problem solving. Mm -hmm. I've got a girlfriend um, uh, that has been doing every I think once a week or once, maybe even twice a week, a different family member picks a theme for the mm -hmm. dinner. And um, they, so again, so it's not just all on her. So she's not the one like, you know, the only one that can put some tacos on the skillet. It, right. you know, let's do something. So one of the kids picks, you know, Mexican night and literally they're like dressing to the nines. They're like, mm -hmm. I think they're doing contests. <laughs> it's, it's a big thing, but really trying to have a fun time as a family right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's like Yvonne said, years from now, you won't remember all the little things, but you'll remember the general feel of we had fun as a family. We did cool stuff and, you know, we had a fire in the fire pit in the middle of the week on a school night, you know, those types of things. Yes. That's what they're going to remember. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You're right. And with all of the other crazy going on, you know, that we are is out of our control. Yeah. It is something that we can control. We can control how we react and respond. And, yeah. Um, I think the I, something that I want to touch on real quick, because Yvonne, you like 
hinted to it, um, but this idea of limiting exposure of outside influences. You know, are you um, cutting back on media? Are you only listening to it? You know, for 20 minutes, are you, or are you diving in and consuming it all day long? And maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's where we just feel like it's weighing too heavy on our shoulders. Um, Yvonne, can you share some of your thoughts on sure. how somebody might address that? I had to cut back very simply. I think the first few days of work for home for me, it was just, um, I just felt like I needed to indulge in the media, understand what was going on, listen to every press conference on the local and national level. But then at some point, um, I just made the decision that it was just too much. It was impacting my mental health, you know, going back to the purpose of the call. It was just, um, it wasn't healthy for me beyond a certain point. So um, I think you've heard me say throughout this call, I have a routine, I'm a morning person, so I will watch the news in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it's usually typically all that I need. Um, now, in terms of just watching TV, um, the neat thing is I'm now watching all the movies that I recorded and never had time to watch. Yeah. Or, um, you know, it was mentioned the theme for dinner, while well, just coming together and watching a movie with your family. Um, those are not things that you could normally do during the week, and now you can in most cases. So um, I'm not saying no TV at all, but maybe it's just um, watching something to make you laugh. I think, Julie, you mentioned you're going to have to laugh through this. And if you're not finding, um, you know, anything funny in your normal day to day, you may just need a laugh boost. You may need a shot of goofy juice and watch a great funny Adam Sandler movie or something um, to get you going. And that could really help a lot. Yeah, I've been binging Ozark. That is not the lightheartedness um, that I, I would recommend. <laughs> And actually, the last couple of episodes were all about mental health. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to yes. stop prepping for this webinar. I have to stop. I must stop. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but, yeah, uh, I, um, I do not watch the news anymore. Um, my husband loves to watch it. And so at some point during the day, I say to him, net it out. What do I need to know? <laughs> because it was sucking the life out of me. Um, and the other thing that I really have to monitor is social media. I'm a big Facebook person. Um, and a lot of what I was reading on social media was really kind of hurting my heart in so many ways. And so I decided uh, twofold, I was going to limit and hide people who were just so negative, I couldn't take it anymore. But I also decided that I wanted my Facebook page to be a page where people could go and feel inspired or laugh. And, you know, when I said humor is so important, so many of the things that I post are just about crazy things that have been happening during this pandemic. And, um, and I think that we can all do that. We can all decide that we are going to be a light for other people. And in doing that, it makes us feel better. You know, whether we hear back from other people or not, that it's making a difference. There's something psychological that when we decide on our social media page, we are going to focus on humor and light and fun and optimism and be an example. It, it just does something that changes your own vibration. So um, I think limiting the negative input is key. Okay. Absolutely. Um, one of the last like kind of official questions that I have. So if people have questions, please um, add them to the chat uh, or into the quick Q&A box or the chat box. I've got them both open. Um, okay. But I want to talk a little bit about um, this idea and kind of advice for those that are managing others and, you know, helping, helping a team, um, helping others to um, either holding space or connecting with them in a new way, um, something, any... Um, if, any thoughts, ideas, recommendations on how people can address this topic with a team that they manage? Yeah. Um, who, who hey, do you Julie, want to... you're good. Okay. Um, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I think if you're managing a team, it's important, and hopefully you already know enough about your individual employees that um, 
you feel comfortable even going to them and saying, you know, how do you like best to communicate? You know, to be honest with you, Zoom makes me anxious when there's like a whole bunch of people. And I would much rather pick up the phone and talk to somebody the old fashioned way. And so, you know, if I had a manager that said, you know, would you prefer that we FaceTime each other? Would you prefer that we just talk on the phone? Um, get some input from them and they will so appreciate the fact that you care enough about them at this point to, um, to be attuned to that. The other thing that I think managers can do, which would go a long way is, and depending on how many people they manage, is uh, take some time to write some old fashioned notes. Um, I started a thing actually at the beginning of the year, one of my little challenges is I'm going to write a note a day. And they've been to all kinds of people, uh, clients, people I've worked with, people I've partnered with, people I'm friends with, people I'm related to, but I just write one note a day. And um, so maybe a manager can just say, okay, I'm going to write one note to an employee a day. It takes less than five minutes and it could be just something as simple as, you know, hey, I know this is, you know, kind of a tough time. I just want to let you know that, um, you know, I appreciate everything that you're doing. I appreciate your flexibility and send it in the mail because we're so bombarded with this screen that's in front of us that to get a piece of actual paper with a heartfelt note from, you know, your leader, I think would go a really long way. Appreciation is, you know, you can't have too much of it. That's something that uh, Whitney Hahn, we did our first webinar mm -hmm. and Whitney Hahn, who I know, Julie, you know, oh, yeah. she recommended that for staying in touch with your customers. Yep. Um, sometimes that's a little bit more challenging because you might not have mailing addresses for mm -hmm. your customers or that you might only have their work and are they getting mail at work and stuff like that. But reach out, go a little old school with these yeah. things and it will really help you to yeah, I love that one note card, uh, writing a note card every day. That's I like awesome. that too. That's great. Yvonne, what about you? As managers, I think it's important that we recognize that as we are being impacted, our employees and teams are being impacted too. So I think first being alert and looking for things in terms of are you noticing disengagement for those that you manage and it could show up in someone who was always prompt always on time um, maybe to julie's point of some waning energy is not getting on webinars and calls timely or at all there's some absenteeism that could be showing up um, this may seem a little funny, but is someone wearing the same shirt on every single call or webinar or Zoom? And it, uh -oh. could, well, and it could be it's the favorite shirt or it's the shirt that I look great on, or is it um, someone who's really struggling? And oftentimes when um, you have low energy or you're going through something, um, there's research that shows too that your hygiene can suffer. Um, so again, as a manager, just being alert to these things, you may not have solutions, but what are you noticing? And it sounds like Sandy with your team, you have daily calls, um, maybe their daily status meeting or standups. And one of those calls, if you have access to employee assistant programs, you're reminding employees about the ability to access uh, materials through the employee assistance program. Um, a lot of organizations that we support have formal mentor or coaching programs. If you ever needed a mentor or coach, you need one right now. Um, so maybe it's encouraging mentees or protégés to make sure that they're reaching out and that the relationship um, channel is being kept alive on um, both ends. Um, I know from an HR perspective, um, you know, there's not a lot that you can really get into in terms of, you know, someone's particular health issues or health concerns. But if your medical plan allows for teledoc or telehealth, again, that could just be a reminder where, you know, you're planting the seed with your employees to say, we all have things going on right now. Here's some resources that may be of help to us all. I think those are some beautiful reminders. And yes, obviously we joke about, you know, wearing 
the same thing. And oh my gosh, yes, I am guilty of it. I put on the, my most comfortable sweatshirt you know, three <laughs> days a week. Um, I'm not going to stand up right now. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but I, um, but, and you're right. And honestly, and I'm guilty sometimes of deflecting with humor. Um, but then I'm often reminded that I need to then take a step back and just be respectful of, you know, that we're all struggling and dealing with things in very different ways. Different ways. And, um, and it might just, it might be more than I know. It, there might be a, um, a family member that has been um, impacted or their best friend or their neighbor might have fallen ill, uh, you know, and, and the things that, that we don't know. And I don't need to know. I just need for the team. We just need for our team, I think, is what you're saying, is to know that there are resources available. Exactly. Exactly. You don't need to know the details, mm -hmm. but you can definitely remind your employees of resources that are available. Um, you asked earlier about routines and setting routine or how do we release our stress. And as managers, reaching out to your team and your one-on-ones and saying, okay, um, you want to run. I, I know that when we were working in the office, you used to create time to run every day. Are you still doing that? Do we need to block time on your calendar so that you can have your moment or your time to run or your time to do your self-care um, routine? And I think just providing that support um, would also be helpful as we're transitioning back to um, some type of office setting, whatever, and can really help to keep your employees engaged as we enter the next phase of this transition. One of the things that came up recently um, with a member of my team is um, was unused leave um, mm -hmm. at the end, um, you mm -hmm. know, of their, you know, their leave cycle and um, and this idea that we're in this time. So it's crazy. Like they can't take the leave. No, no, no. Like you need, you need a day, you need a vacation, yeah, you need a long course. weekend. Even if you're not yeah. going somewhere, um, take a day and don't check email. Don't check text. So I needed to have said this out loud. Um, and then it got me thinking, and actually I've put a day on my calendar the beginning of June that, I'm shutting it off. I'm going to call mm -hmm. it a vacation day and I'm not going to check anything. Right. So giving really, again, boundaries, the theme for the yep. day. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, thank you. Did, did we have any questions? Um, we had not had any questions yet, but um, we, somebody raised their hand and I've um, sent her a quick chat to see if she had a question. Um, if, you know, you have any, um, you know, kind of, Clothing, closing thoughts, um, but truly, if anybody is sitting here on the line today um, and has a question, if there's something or um, something that you would like to share, um, you know, I won't read your name out loud um, mm -hmm. if you're asking it um, in this in this space. Um, but please, you can go ahead and type that into the question box um, or the chat box. Like I said, I've got both of them open. Uh, but um, maybe, you know, Julie, some quick kind of maybe final thoughts or um, final tips that somebody could think about. Yeah, just um, just remember that what we're all dealing with is something that is unprecedented. And so be kind, uh, be kind to yourself, be kind to those that you're with. Um, you know, Yvonne used the word grace and to me, grace kind of sums it all up. Uh, set the bar low. <laughs> Um, and, you know, just celebrate the little wins and just remember that long after this time is over, um, you know, it's more about the feeling and how well you got through a really difficult time. Um, put fuel in your tank, you know, and um, you can't run very long with an empty tank. So, thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yvonne? I'm reminded of Maslow's hierarchy of needs um, as it relates to this um, topic of mental health, mental health care and self-care and maybe an action item. And I'm not trying to add to anyone's plate, but drop the name Maslow's and what is Sandy's hierarchy of needs? What's Julie's hierarchy of needs? What's Yvonne's hierarchy of needs? And 
maybe if we just write that down and attach it to our computer and it's that reminder to walk, it's that reminder to breathe, it's that reminder to drink water, it's that reminder to journal. Um, one thing um, that I'll leave as a tip for everyone is um, sometimes I know that I can't give an hour to something that seems so daunting, but I'll find something I want to do, maybe a book I want to read, um, even just for a moment, and I'll set a timer for 23 minutes. Okay, I can't give this task 30 minutes, but I want to give it a little bit of time, and I'll set a timer, and for 23 minutes or some random time period, I'll focus on that. And um, again, that becomes a win for me. Um, but yeah, I just... Um, I think that whole hierarchy of needs is so important right now and understanding the importance of taking care of yourself. And it is going to matter in terms of mentally how well you are and how you perceive this time that we're in right now. Thank you. We did have a quick question, um, not a quick question though. Um, they didn't miss uh, the first couple of minutes, but I think that there's still something in here that we can kind of get back and, and maybe really quickly highlight some of the um, advice because I think it's relevant. Um, how do we try to balance two parents that are working from home with three kids, mm -hmm. a middle schooler, a second grader, a kindergartner um, that has autism um, and trying to get them to work together um, to get their work done um, along with a potty, a toddler that's potty training. So yeah. I think that the small wins, you know, yeah. schedule. Definitely. Definitely the small wins, um, creating a schedule. Uh, one thing that I will say to this person is I had to um, put a check on myself early on and work from home that um, my schooling from home wasn't always um, relegated to the end of the day. And I had to find times during the day that sync up with a normal school day to give my son the attention that he needed for his projects. Um, and I built that into my schedule and blocked that out on my calendar. It was an appointment. And, um, but then too, with my son um, and his schooling, I've had to engage with his teachers to get a better understanding, like for the middle schooler and the second grader. Um, you know, what's really important here? <laughs> um, now's not the time for busy work for anyone. Tell me what the key projects are. And that's where I'll focus my energy. Uh, and maybe the same could be true for the kindergartner for this particular person. But just like we're having to choose what to do for work, I had to have that very transparent conversation with teacher to say, I cannot accomplish eight things today. Mm -hmm. You've got to tell me what the most important things are. I'll get those done and I'll get to something else if I can. And I think teachers are feeling the stress too. I know they are. So that line of communication being open has really helped both my son and my relationship with his teacher. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I just also would just like to say, um, take the word balance out of your vocabulary. <laughs> Balance to me, when I hear the word balance, it means that it has to be somewhat equal. Um, some days it's going to be weighed very heavy with the kids in school and very little of your work. Mm -hmm. uh, and then other days, you know, maybe they're having a better day and so you can get more work done. But um, the whole word balance, I think, almost sets us up for disappointment. Yeah. Um, there's going to be highs and lows in every day. So very important Good question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I just wanted to like, and we've got like one minute left sleep patterns in terms of some triggers, energy being down procrastination as like maybe some signs that we're struggling. Um, and then to balance that with grace, grit, and gratitude. I absolutely loved it celebrating the wins, um, know your peak time of the day, morning or evening, no is a complete sentence, um, the collaboration with your problem solving. Um, I love the employee, you know, just reaching out to them, helping them, um, asking, just asking the question, knowing, showing that you, 
that you care, pointing them in the direction of some resources that are available. All really amazing suggestions. And um, Yvonne, Julie, I cannot thank you enough. Okay, so um, you're all gonna see here in 10 seconds that I actually had a slide deck with their beautiful faces on it and I completely yay. forgot to, to switch to it. So that yay. was when I was getting haircuts. <laughs> I know, I know, and mine's back in a bun, oh, so. Oh my God, it's so funny. It totally cracks me up. It. Um, but uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, uh, Yvonne, really excited for our, you know, new relationship and to see all the things of that we course. can do together. And Julie, you are just, you know, truly um, amazing. And I love walking into a room knowing that you're going to be the keynote speaker oh, or whatever it is. And you. I, you know, I thank you. Love I thank you. Thank you for lending your expertise today. Um, quick bit of housekeeping. The Charles County mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce is offering peace of mind during this pandemic with th free membership to all Charles County businesses and nonprofits. They're offering that um, through August 31st. Um, and you can go to uh, charlescountychamber.org and click join now to activate your free membership with the chamber. Great. And, Next week, we've got social media as a digital storefront. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this one. We're going to be talking about creating your online um, store, transitioning from real to, you know, from in, in store to online, and how you can start to really blend the two, as well as Facebook shop and things like that. So that one should be, um, should be super fun. But Again, one more thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay! Thank you, Sandy, Julie, Julie, and Yvonne. I really bye -bye. appreciate it. Um, okay. Thank you, everybody, Thanks. and thank you, Jay at US Tech. Bye, yes. Jay. Yay. Bye, Jay. <laughs> uh, and for replays, oops, replays, you can visit uh, meetcharlescounty.com. So um, cool. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. You too.